Oh, hey, Mom, what are you doing? Hey, I have some bits of cardboard here, and I'm doing a very special experiment. Um, what would that be? To do with two slits in the cardboard. Hmm. And it's also to do with seeing how many wave forms you get either side of that little laser. Can you see those? Uh, I think so. Those, so those are the two wider ones. And then I go to two that are closer together. It's just picking up blobs. Okay. Yeah, the uh, theory is that the wave patterns of the laser going through the two slits at the same time cause the patterns of light to kind of overlap and interact with each other. Hmm. I got this at just the right focal length before and it's not doing it. So the idea was to prove that light behaves like waves like you might see on the water. So if you uh, had two groups of ripples intersecting with each other mm -hmm. in the water, they would um, put the light on. The, the ripples would uh, overlap and, and merge as they go out from the two things. Right. And so with the two, the double slit experiment said that uh, or showed that those merged interference ripples are more intense in the middle and then tail off to the outsides. So um, when Thomas Young did that experiment, um, it was to prove that light acts as a wave. So All right. That's what I was doing. Cool. All right. Joel, Joel and Linda, Linda in, in the, the evening. For the final time. <laughs> I saw you uh, doing that double slit experiment thing, at least that's yeah. what I think it was. Yeah. Uh, you develop an interest in quantum theory? Well, I thought it would be interesting to find out a little bit about what that means, because I've never really understood what people are talking about. All right. Um, and that experiment actually was done in 1801. Oh, uh, really? Like 200 plus years ago by this guy, Thomas Young. And he was um, looking to prove that uh, light was in the form of waves. Hmm. Because nobody really understood or could prove one way or the other whether light occurred in waves or as particles. Hmm. Uh, what do you know about uh, this guy Hugens theory? I've heard about that, but I don't know much about it. Oh, well, he also uh, was a big wave guy. Oh. Um, and he was the guy who uh, opposed Newton. And Newton thought that it was particles. Ah. And in fact, he called them really something weird. He called them corpuscles. Corpuscles? Yes. So there were corpuscles in light. And I grew up learning about corpuscles being um, uh, blood cells, which is really weird now to think about that. But yeah, he and uh, Huygens were um, working um, around the same time in the 17th century, hmm. talking about, or yeah, I mean, Newton looked at so many different things, but one of them was the nature of what is light. Hmm. Yeah. So what do you know about quantum theory? Um, I know Max Planck apparently uh, started the real, the real serious looking at that shenanigans. I heard his name too. He's the guy that did uh, some stuff about radiation, isn't he? Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, a really intriguing term is black body radiation. And Intriguing to black holes. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, it's not that. It's uh, to do with um, 
the Newtonian uh, classical uh, physics model of radiation would suggest that as wavelengths get shorter and you go into the UV spectrum, ultraviolet, that radiation would continue increasing. Hmm. Um, and actually it doesn't, it drops off. Hmm. Um, and so he came up with a formula and so there is a, a constant named after him that is a very, very tiny um, amount. It's, it's Thanks, like constant. Yes, it's um, six point something times ten to the power of like minus thirty one or something like that. Um, and that defines, um, uh, along with an integer in that formula, that defines energy as whole units in incremental steps. Hmm. And so he was the first guy who started thinking about um, energy not in a smooth, um, continuing number line kind of thing, but in discrete steps. It's just that the steps are so tiny, they weren't able to understand that there even were discrete chunks of energy in a progression. That's interesting. So that's where the whole idea of anything being quantized is to do with it being a discrete quantity. Okay, so when something's quantized, it's like, it's made certain, something like that? Yeah, it's it's a defined amount. It may, and um, so um, those tiny units started out being called quanta, right. quantums, and... Which comes from the word quantity, I assume? Well, I guess, yeah, I, yeah. Something like that. Uh, uh, from what I've seen, it does, uh, yeah. anyways. Uh, and that and that got changed to uh, calling them photons. So particularly mm. with light, uh, we think of things at that very tiny level as being called photons. Right. Am I boring you, Joel? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, actually. Uh, what are we going to talk about next? <laughs> um. Well, I've heard this thing about being in two places at once. Uh, you were telling me something about that the other day. Were, did it have something to do with Schrodinger's cat, maybe? Yeah, maybe it did. Maybe it did. Okay. Schrodinger's cat. That comes from a thought experiment also about quantum uh, mechanics mm -hmm. by this guy. Uh, I don't... Let's see. Schrodinger. Yeah, Schrodinger. I don't remember his first name. <laughs> Erwin Schrodinger. That's right. Erwin Schrodinger. Okay. okay. He didn't actually do this with a cat. No cats were harmed in the making of this uh, thought experiment. Uh, but his thought experiment was that put a cat in a sealed box. Mm -hmm. You know, because cats like boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Yeah, cat in a box with a radioactive isotope and a... Let's see, a vial of poison. And, there's a, and it's set up so there's a 50-50% chance that uh, a hammer, that, that radioactive isotope will cause a trigger that makes a hammer break the vial of poison and kill the cat. So, when you open the box, there's a 50-50% chance the cat is both alive, the cat is alive, either alive or dead, so in that very moment, it's both at the same time. Just due to sheer uncertainty. Or at least that's how the thought experiment supposedly goes. Wow, that's a bit of a crazy illustration of uncertainty. Yeah, doesn't necessarily have to be a cat, but yeah. So what's the other stuff about the uncertainty principle? The uncertainty principle? You're talking about Heisenberg's principle then? I guess I am. Okay, let's see, there's also, yeah, there's also Heisenberg's principle, which determines that, you know, as we, I think we discussed this before, uh, lights can, photons can either be in a wave or a particle depending on whether they're being observed or not. Mm -hmm. The wave is a, can be considered as a probability wave, mm -hmm. with the peaks being the most, the highest probability that the photon can be at, the particle can mm -hmm. be at, mm -hmm. and the trough being the absolute lowest. Right. So when you have a sine wave, which is just a wave with a perfectly equal wavelength, right. you know... And repeating. Yeah, exactly. It repeats indefinitely, so you don't know where 
the thing is going to be. You just know it's going to be on one of those uh, peaks, but you do know its momentum because each because its wavelength can be used to calculate its momentum right. or is its momentum. Yeah. With the frequency. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But if you have an otherwise straight line with one spike mm -hmm. for a peak, you know exactly where, or almost exactly where that photon, where that particle is going to be, mm -hmm. but you don't know what the wavelength is, and thus you don't know the momentum. Okay, so that's what that thing is where you might know position, but you don't know wavelength. Right, was that what we were talking about before then? Yeah. Okay. I kind of think of that like um, uh, a, a rotating object, um, like on a Ferris wheel. We were doing a thing in physics where as the thing um, gains kinetic energy, it equally... Tired? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying? <laughs> gains kinetic energy and is losing potential energy at the same rate. Right. And so... It's, it's maximum kinetic energy is equal to its maximum potential energy. Yes, but they kind of slide past each other in like two wedges. Right. Um, in, in That makes me think of something else that's related. Yeah. Entanglement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a fun one. So when two of these particles interfere with each other, they become... The same. They have the same wavelength now. They're the same wave. Same sine wave, whatever. Okay. One of them's over here, and the other one's, like, right here. Mm -hmm. You mess with this one right here, or you, you look at this one right here, mm -hmm. and because that makes it certain that quantizes it, mm -hmm. it also quantizes the one over here because it is the exact same wavelength. At the exact same time? At the exact same time, yes. Wow. This kind of break, this kind of almost disproved almost disproved Einstein's theory of relativity, which kind of made him panic a little bit, but it kind of does it at the same time because it can't really be used for communication since every time you look at it, you analyze it, it is a completely random set of results. It is a completely random set of results. Hmm. So the reason that Einstein uh, was concerned was to do with the speed? The speed at which you can communi they communicate between each other. Right. Uh, right. So to speak. Because, you know, like, again, you look at this one, instantly that one is also being looked at. Okay. If that makes any sense. So that would imply a communication between the two of them. Yep. Or, or... Faster than the speed of light, because yes. it's completely instantaneous. Exactly. So... Well, one of these days, they'll sort it out so that we can get faster than the speed of light computing. That would be the next awesome development from that. <laughs> that would be? I mean, I've heard quantum computing thrown around as a, as a thing. That's a completely different thing, because okay. that's more to do with the state of light particles being, like, you know ones and zeros. Yes. Because a one, it, like, it's either on or it's off. That's what yeah. a one and zero, that's what binary. one and zeros are, binary. Yeah. Now imagine a computer that wasn't strictly regulated to ones and zeros. That's what quantum computers are. There's like a half state in between. Yeah, basically, because... Or both at once? More like a half state in between. It's like, Schrod it's like a Schrodinger's cat situation. Okay. They don't have to be one or the other until you look at them. More or less, yeah. Or something along those lines. Yeah. I don't know the exact stuff behind it. It's been a while since I've actually... Uh, research them at all mm. but it is something along those lines and rather than being called bits they're called qubits and so oh, okay. far they're still in the hundreds yeah they're still in the hundreds as far as like how many you could put into a quantum computer but the more you put into them like it goes up exponentially so mm. you put like one in there you put another in there and it goes up more exponentially rather than linearly which is okay. That's pretty a cool. good thing yeah. because you know you put more qubits in there it's going to go up Computer power is going to go through the roof. Wow. Only problem is, is that uh, it requires a cold environment. Like, a really cold environment. Okay. Because, like, you, heating is a thing. The, yeah. You don't want the darn you computer don't... overheating itself no, and right. destroying everything. Right. Yeah, it would... Yeah, that makes sense. It's like, it the, super com... it's like the super... It's like the super... It's like the super computer at ORNL. Right. 
Um, hey, I heard a really cool thing uh, that got done more recently, and that was to um, observe the behavior of one photon going through uh, a slit. Like, they, they made the slit really, really, really narrow so just one photon could get through. Hmm. And uh, it was discovered to behave like a particle but then wave-like behavior on the other side. So it interfered with itself. That is curious. Yes. So there, there is more <laughs> to this stuff than, than we, we can we really can, see. Yeah. But at this point, with what we've been about. talking, at this point with, with what we've been talking about, it makes sense. Yeah. So it's well, and it's also amazing that what was theory has now been proved because we've advanced technologically to the point where we can actually observe the things that were just theory. Right. You need to go to bed. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right, I'll say good night, Joel. Good night. Thanks for hanging out. No problem. And being in two places at once. Am I? Or not? I don't know. Are you? Takes forty-two to read me. That way, you can answer the last percent of everything. Let's hope so. Forty-two. If that's the answer to everything, that's easy. Yeah, that's easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, Joel. Good night. <laughs> and good night. <laughs> Joel and Linda, Linda in, in the, the evening. evening. For the final time. <laughs> <laughs>